Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Insanity walkthrough. In the last episode, we had ourselves some action again and took the fight to Cerberus. We also met our former squad member Jacob while rescuing a group of defected Cerberus scientists. And today we will continue with the game's main storyline, and that means it is finally time to meet with the Quarians. So let us not waste any time here and head straight for the rendezvous point, as the Quarian Flotilla is currently located near the edge of the galaxy in the Far Rim Cluster. And we don't have anything to scan or survey here, so we can immediately head to the Quarian ship, which will then allow the Quarian Admirals to come aboard the Normandy. Commander Shepard, a pleasure to see you again, though I wish it were under better circumstances. I had hoped for your support in the fight against the Reapers. What's going on? Seventeen days ago, with precision strikes on four Geth systems, the Quarians initiated the war to retake our homeworld. Which was a clear violation of our agreement with the Council to avoid provoking the Geth. A treaty violation is nothing compared to recovering our homeworld and advanced AI technology. Your homeworld? You mean Rannoch? Correct, Commander. Three hundred years ago, we lost our world to our own AI creations, the Geth. After we attempted to kill them? We didn't try to kill them, Chorus. We tried to deactivate them. It wasn't murder. Now, asking about the Quarian's history earlier was actually important, not only for the game's story, but also for morality points, as we now have one extra choice to make here, and as always, we'll go with the Paragon option. No. It was murder. Commander, the Quarians never intended to create a true AI. It was an accident. Which you chose to correct by trying to kill them. Don't bother. Admitting we were wrong would undercut the justification for this suicidal invasion plan. Now, apart from the morality points, this is actually a rather interesting discussion here, as the entire conflict between the Geth and the Quarians is, at least in my opinion, one of the biggest grey areas in the game. For that reason, I think there are arguments to be made for both sides, however, at least in this conversation, we'll stick to the Paragon path. You're throwing yourselves at the Geth? Again? And this time, we may have destroyed our people for good. We've driven the Geth back to their home system when this signal began broadcasting to all Geth ships. The Reapers. Under Reaper control, the Geth are significantly more effective. Our fleet is pinned in the home system. If we're going to win, we're... Win? You insisted on involving the civilian ships, Admiral Geralt. We need to retreat or we'll lose the life ships. Where's the signal coming from? Here. A Geth dreadnought. It can outgun anything we've got and it's heavily defended. The Normandy stealth drive can get us in undetected. I could board, then disable the Reaper command signal. Yes, cutting off the signal should throw the Geth into complete disarray. Once again, we have two options here, and yes, deactivating the signal would be a perfect opportunity for a counterattack. But let's also not forget that such an attack would likely involve some of the civilian ships, so I think a retreat would be the most sensible plan. And while they're confused, you get to a mass relay and retreat. Good. Our civilian ships have seen too much fighting already. Are you certain you can disable the signal? We'll get you out of there safely, Admiral. Our newest Admiral has also volunteered to offer technical expertise. Shepard. Tally. Admirals, already a team to hit that dreadnought. Thank you, Commander. Admiral? It's mostly a formality. I'm an expert on the Geth. That you are. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Now this is actually not a morality choice, and to be honest we did come here primarily for the fleet, but I don't think we need to tell her that, at least not yet. Why didn't you tell me? I would have helped. Oh, thanks, but... I knew you had your own problems. I'm sorry about Earth. We've got the largest fleet in the galaxy. If you can help us, we'll hit the Reapers with everything we've got. 
or however much is left from this stupid war. I thought you'd support the invasion. No. After talking to Legion, I thought maybe there was a chance for peace. So why help them? I'm an admiral. People look to me for guidance. Public disagreement would divide the fleet. And fairly abruptly here, we also have the option to ask about Talis and Shepard's relationship. And considering that we finished Mass Effect 2 with the two of them as a couple, I think this might be an option worth exploring. And what about us? Would us being together divide the fleet? No. Well, possibly. I, I, I don't know. But right now, I've got civilian ships taking fire. Can we keep this quiet? At least in front of the Admirals? Sure thing, Miss Vas Normandy. Oh, thank you. If you want to talk in private, maybe you could invite me up to your cabin? Maybe I could. And for the record, still totally worth it. Right, now at this point we could immediately use the mass relay here to go to the next mission, but we're not going to do that. Commander Shepard. Instead, we can make our way back to the war room, where some of the Quarians are still present, including Admiral Shala Ran, also referred to as Auntie Ran by Tali in Mass Effect 2, a very good friend of Tali and her family, and perhaps also a good source of information. Shepard, the fleet is under heavy fire. We need to hit the Dreadnought. Now, for the moment, we will only ask her about the three Quarian fleets, and we will actually skip the question about Admiral Zen for now. Don't worry though, we will explore that later, even in a bit more detail than is currently possible. I'd like to know about your patrol fleet. In peacetime, the patrol fleet managed navigation, internal security, and intership conflicts or crimes. Now, we mostly guard the heavy fleet's flank. It's mostly light frigates or fighters. What can you tell me about Admiral Geralt's heavy fleet? It was our main military force before the war, comprised of all Korean vessels suited for sustained combat. It can't compare to the Turian forces, of course, but we have a number of heavy frigates and advanced fighter forces. Tally said you had the largest fleet in the galaxy. The Turians have more dreadnoughts. Their overall military force is larger than our heavy fleet by far. But before we began this war, we jury-rigged every Quarian ship in the flotilla for battle. Even our live ships have cannons. And even though we don't gain any morality points for it, we can now offer our opinion on that. And interestingly enough, the top option here not only points out how ethically questionable that is, but also reveals that, at least in Council space, it is actually illegal. You've converted them into dreadnoughts. That's a violation of the Treaty of Ferrixen. Why live ships have firepower comparable to a dreadnought? Their primary purpose is food cultivation. You think the Council will buy that technicality? If need be. I'll apologize once this war is over. And in the meantime, you're putting your civilians in danger. Not casually, Commander. We keep them off the front lines. But we'll do whatever we must to win. Tell me about the civilian fleet. Our civilian ships, medical vessels, and live ships. Admiral Chorus coordinates them. Though individual ships' captains still have power. In peacetime, they made up the bulk of our fleet. Now, our strength would even give the Turians pause. Alright, so we have learned a bit about the Quarian fleets, and that's it for now. Again, though, we will be talking to her once more at the end of the episode. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you, Commander. For now, we can take note of the fact that Tali is also standing right around the corner here, so let's have a brief chat with her as well. That dreadnought is tearing through our fleet. Let me know when you're ready to hit it. And again, plenty of questions to ask here, so let's learn a bit more about what Tali has been up to these last few months. How did the war with the Geth get started anyway? Admiral Zen developed a scanning countermeasure that interferes with Geth active scans. It's like a flashbang grenade. It effectively crippled the Geth ships in combat. 
My fleet couldn't pass up the chance to attack. Could we use it to fight the Reapers? It only works against the Geth, unfortunately. Their AI lets them use extremely detailed LADAR pings. Zen's countermeasure overwhelmed them with garbage data. And it's useless now that the Reapers have upgraded their processing power. So how did you end up back with your fleet, Tally? When the war started, the Admiralty Board asked for my help. I had more recent contact with the Geth than most of my people. They hadn't filled the spot on the board left by my father. I was invited in. It's just a technicality. I'm far too young to be a real admiral. Don't sell yourself short, Taddy. The board needed your expertise. You needed the authority that comes with rank. How is it being back with the fleet? Right now, it's exhausting. I'm an admiral in the middle of a war. I just want us to get out of this alive. Everything else can wait. When this is over, I could use your help. I can't, Shepard. If we survive this, we'll have a homeworld. My people need me. You could help your people's homeworld by fighting the Reapers. I don't know. Maybe if I had the right incentive? No, that's not... My people need me here. So what about Legion? It returned to Geth space after you turned yourself into the Alliance. And you haven't seen it since? I... Uh, Legion and I sent a few messages. I was hoping we could try negotiation. But I was outvoted three to two. Admiral Chorus was the only one who believed it would work. Any idea where Legion is now? No. In our last message, it told me that the Geth were having trouble reaching consensus. And then nothing? Maybe it was fighting the Reaper takeover? Or maybe it didn't want to give intel to an enemy? I could have warned it about the invasion. I didn't. You'd have been betraying your own people. I never wanted to be an admiral. And, well, it looks like the war has forced yet another person into a role they didn't really choose for themselves, and I'm afraid that Tali is not going to be the last person we meet in that position. Talk to you later, Tali. If you want to catch up in private, call me up to your cabin. Now, very importantly, we are not going to do that just yet. Instead, we can head straight back to the CIC and begin our next mission. Commander Shepard. Now, the reason we are not inviting Tali up is romance-related, so I don't think I'm spoiling anything there. And that is a decision that I would like to save for the next episode. So for today, let us disable a Geth Dreadnought. Now, once again, we don't have any scanning opportunities here, but a few locations of interest are still marked on the galaxy map. The first is the Quarian Migrant Fleet, currently still a safe distance away from the Geth Dreadnought, and if we succeed, they can hopefully retreat for good. In between the fleet and the Dreadnought, we find a huge debris field, the remains of several Geth satellites and space stations, and then we finally have the Dreadnought itself, a huge Geth ship that at least so far seems to have been completely above anything the Quarians were able to throw at it, and with that, it is exactly where we want to go. Now, Tally is a mandatory squad member for this mission, however, we still want to cycle through her outfits to find one that actually boosts her power recharge speed. We'll then go with Edie as the second squad member, because having her on board of a Geth ship could be interesting. For Shepard's weapon loadout, we'll stick with SMGs for a while longer, but this time we're going with the Geth Plasma SMG. I just think it fits well thematically, and it's actually quite fun to use, especially with a magazine upgrade that can keep it firing for quite some time. Now, Tally comes with a shotgun, and we'll stick with the katana here and only slap on the usual accuracy and damage upgrades. Meanwhile, for her pistol, we'll go with the Acolyte, which is actually a little more similar to a small grenade launcher, as the projectile can be bounced off of surfaces before it eventually explodes and then deals massive damage against shields and barriers. Admittedly, squad members are not too accurate with it, but it does some splash damage, so we're giving it to Tali and Edie regardless, while Edie also gets the Geth Plasma SMG to go along with it. Moving on to powers, we are yet again skipping the whole bonus power talk for now and jump straight to Edie, who we can give the final rank of Unshackled AI. 
With the squad bonus upgrade here, we boost tech power damage and duration, and especially during this mission, that will come in handy. With the remaining points, we are then grabbing the first three ranks of Defense Matrix, a neat way to quickly get some shields back, albeit at the cost of a longer power cooldown. I personally tend to not use it that much, but it might be useful in the right situation. We can now also unlock the first two ranks of Decoy, again not the most useful power in my opinion, but it allows ED to spawn a duplicate on the battlefield to distract enemies for a short period of time. Now, that brings us to Tally, and first things first, let's max out Energy Drain. This power is unique in that it not only damages enemy shields, but actually steals shield power and gives it to Tally, and if you want to, the damage is actually comparable to Overload. We are not developing it in that direction, however, and instead go for increased radius, increased recharge speed and the addition of a temporary layer of armor at rank 6, because I think in this game it's usually better to be able to hit many enemies often than it is to hit one enemy really hard. Still, for stripping shields we have Edie in the squad, which is why Sabotage here is going to be Tali's bread and butter power. Unlike the power in Mass Effect 1 that disabled weapons and attacks, Sabotage is essentially AI hacking from Mass Effect 2, allowing Tali to take control of enemy synthetics. And the power is not limited to just one enemy at a time. As you can see, Sabotage has a radius, meaning we can potentially turn multiple enemies against each other at the same time. The ability also does some damage, a bit more with the Backfire upgrade at rank 4, and again we want to be able to use it as often as possible. At rank 6, we are then going with Tech Vulnerability, which actually has some slightly more complex math behind it than what is shown on screen here, but suffice it to say, it will allow us to take down affected enemies much faster. Now, we still have points, so let's max out Quarry and Machinist next, for a lovely boost to Tally's health, shields and, most importantly, power recharge speed. In this sense, she is very similar to Liara, only on the tech side of things, so not too much of a change from Mass Effect 1, where the two of them were one of our go-to squad combinations. With the upgrades at rank 4 and 5, we want to reinforce this tech specialization and skip anything that might increase weapon damage or general survivability, while at rank 6 we are grabbing Drone Specialist, so that Tali can use her combat and defensive drones a bit more frequently. Speaking of which, Combat Drone is actually a pretty useful power if we're not busy hacking synthetics, so let's push it to rank 4 right away as well. You can already see the recharge speed here is super fast, but the drone is a bit flimsy, something we can change with a shield upgrade at rank 4. And that's all for the moment, again lots of prep work as is always the case when obtaining a new squad member, but we are done now, so let's finally start the mission. We're approaching the quarry and home system. ETA to Rannoch, five minutes. What have you got from the comm buoys? Pretty much a big old shitstorm, Commander. I have detected several hundred unique ship signatures engaged in active combat. Yeah, like I said. Take us in, Joker. Stealth drive engaged. Only way they'll detect us is if you all start singing the Russian national anthem. Warfare suite has accessed their docking protocols. All right. Once we're aboard, we find whatever's broadcasting the Reaper signal and shut it down. Tally's our expert on Geth software. She'll be handling hacking and security. Your expertise with the Geth is a welcome addition, Tally. Edie. So... a body? It has proven useful. I hope it doesn't cause you concern. Not unless you go crazy and decide to overthrow the humans. If I decide to overthrow the humans, you will be the first to know. Shepard, there's a problem. All tombs except one are physically secured. I see the free one. Pretty torn up, though. Too risky for the whole team. I'll secure the docking area. Everyone else can follow me over. Roger that, Commander. We'll just stay here. You know, 
quietly. Hang tight. It'll just be a minute. So, we start off the mission all on our own and considering what's going on in space around us, we begin things with a comparatively calm spacewalk that even allows us to take in the view for a moment. No wonder the Quarians were having trouble. That ship is enormous. It is 30% larger than an Alliance dreadnought. Tally, you're gonna like the view. Better than a vid? Much. Now, this first section here is really nothing special, we just have to find a way through this broken tube to eventually reach the other side. I don't think I'm spoiling anything when I tell you that we will be facing some geth during this mission, which is why Edie is with us, among other things, as she also has a few interesting lines of dialogue. James has some of those as well, including a nickname for Tali, so he is another excellent choice. How are you doing, Shepard? The lack of gravity is a little disorienting. The Dreadnought has artificial gravity. You should be okay once you're on board. Until then, I'll make do with mag boots. Hey, take your time, Commander. We're fine until they, you know, look out a window. Geth don't use windows, remember? Structural weakness. Like the Geth are just sitting there saying, those organics would never try the no windows thing twice. like the rest of the team isn't using the docking tube. So I'm guessing you'd rather not solo the Dreadnought. Not if I can help it. Ask Tally to get on the Dreadnought schematics. If she can point me at another docking tube, I'll override the controls and let the boarding party on. I've got gravity again. Great. I'm looking for... Got it. There should be a hull breach not far from your position. The nearest undamaged docking tube is on the other side. I think I found that hull breach you mentioned. Admiral Geralt tried a frontal assault. We lost six frigates. That tiny hull was the only damage we did. I wouldn't call it tiny. Not the way you'd have done it? No, he was too aggressive. I argued, but as Admiral of the Heavy Fleet, it was ultimately his decision. What about the other admirals? Zen backed the invasion, largely as a chance to test her toys. Ron gave provisional support. Only Chorus opposed the war with me, and he was right. We could lose the whole fleet, Shepard. We'll get your people out of here safely. I found another airlock. I think we're good to go. Great. If you override the controls, we'll be right there. By the way, the first conversation with Tally here sometimes does not trigger. A simple reload usually does the trick, though. And I think it's vital to understand how the war ultimately came to be. Got it. You're cleared aboard. Thank you, Shepard. I will try to find a more convenient docking point next time. Next time? Thank you for having me over. Well, I don't actually know where I'm going. I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, take a look at this. There, it's open. We're clear to go. Now Tally has just left us the arc pistol, a pistol that can be charged for extra powerful shots that consume three units of ammo at once. On one hand, that makes it versatile, but on the other, charging takes quite long and regular shots are fairly weak, so we're not going to test it out just yet, but perhaps later. Looks impressive. It's Admiral Zen's design. It transmits an energy pulse on contact that disrupts shields and synthetics. That'll be handy. That is much like using polonium-tipped rounds against organics, which is illegal. Against the Geth, we need every advantage we can get. So where are we headed? We're looking for an operations center. I can disable the Reaper command signal from there. Where's the closest one? Past their defense network and through a sensor cluster. Gah, vents. Always the vents. You did fine at the collector base. I got set on fire! Guardian anti-fighter lasers. 
I believe the dreadnoughts using ultraviolet frequencies instead of the standard infrared. Expensive. Bet it gives them an edge in close combat, though. When the fleet rushed the dreadnought, those lasers carved right through our ships. You okay? I will be. Thanks. Watch out! Get the incoming! Now, combat has begun, and we can immediately use Tali's sabotage to cause some commotion in the Geth ranks, turning a Geth trooper into an ally and taking the heat off of us for the time being. More Geth forces incoming! I don't hear an alarm! They're Geth! They send alerts to every unit on this ship! We need to get to the operation center before they box us in! So, this first fight here consists of two basic Geth units, the Trooper and the Rocket Trooper, nothing entirely unfamiliar after the first two games in the series, and so we already know that the Rocket Troopers should be avoided. Our SMG also shows why it's fun to use. It takes a moment to get going, but after a few seconds this thing fires ridiculously fast, and thanks to the magazine upgrade we can keep the trigger pressed for a grand total of 159 rounds. The Geth lacks no preservation instincts. Network intelligence! As we kill them, their attacks become more aggressive! You have engaged the Geth previously, Shepard. Tactical advice? Disable their shields. Then take them down before they reach ours! Yeah, great tactical advice here, but as you can see, the fight is already almost over. Now at this point we want to be careful, as there is a trip mine on the ground here that can only be spotted once we get fairly close to it, and of course we don't want to step on it. Moving on, we can then grab some credits and leave the first short combat section behind us. So far nothing too challenging, but then again we are also bringing a very high level team of robotic experts along, so to be honest we probably should have an easy time. Look, the signal's hitting all Geth processes. The Reapers have them completely under control. Its structure is amazingly complex. It is unsurprising that the Quarians have been unable to disrupt it. We may be able to extract combat data from these sensor panels. We're taking heavy losses. The Geth have a planetary defense cannon. It's ripping through our fleet. I won't let you down, Tally. Why do we need to find the operations center? Wouldn't any access console do? Unlikely. Consoles like this are accessing programs being used by hundreds of Geth simultaneously. They are all networked cooperatively. To disable the Reaper's signal from here, you would need to override all the Geth. Do you ever wish you were like them, networked? No, I enjoy the freedom of intelligence without requiring consensus. You don't feel lonely being the only AI on the Normandy? I have the opportunity to socialize with the crew, and I do so for curiosity or pleasure, not out of cognitive necessity, as the Geth do. And conversations like this are why I think Edie is the perfect squad member for this mission. Now, over on the side here we find the Geth Pulse Rifle, and we are actually going to switch over to that now. Yes, I know we do not have the option to attach any upgrades at this point, but the weapon is pretty good as it is, once again with a lovely firing rate and pretty good accuracy for an assault rifle. The Dreadnought's operation center is just ahead. Good. Let's get the Reaper signal and get the fleet out of here. Moving in. Okay, so we have some Geth Hunters against us in this fight, and their presence is the main reason why this encounter here is a little bit more on the difficult side. One hunter down. We must find the remaining hunters. And Edie's short line here should be taken seriously. It is extremely easy to get surprised by a cloaked hunter from behind, and especially on insanity difficulty that quickly results in a game over. The room's layout certainly adds to that, as there is really no position where we cannot be attacked from at least two sides, so it definitely pays off to keep moving and to often check that our squad members are not being engaged by a hunter in melee combat. Those flying things, by the way, are the projectiles from Tally's Acolyte pistol. Like I said, not overly accurate. That's the last of them. Let's see if that console is operational. Look at how much data the Dreadnought Central Processor is handling. Their threaded processing is remarkably effective. I would not be able to handle that much data alone. 
And before we use the console, let's help ourselves to another upgrade and some credits. Damn it! They've locked down the Reaper signal! We can't shut it down from here in the operation center! There! The Reaper signal's coming from the drive core! So if we get there, we shut it down? Right, but how do we get there? The Geth have sealed emergency bulkheads to block us off. We need a route to the drive core that can't be blocked. A path that runs the length of the ship. What about the main battery? It runs right by the drive core. That could work. But? The Geth still have us locked in here. We need to get these doors open. They've locked high-level processes. We need something basic. A shipwide emergency like a fire. What about the heat diffusion system? Wait, if I faked a thermal warning, it would open all maintenance tubes for emergency venting. Would that override the lockdown? Yes. Okay, I've got it primed. But be ready. I'm reading hostile geth on the other side of the doors. Geth are dropping from the ceiling. And there definitely are, so let's keep an eye out. Luckily though, Tali's sabotage works even when the target is shielded, so we can easily take control of some of the hunters that were otherwise very likely going to flank us. Due to the sheer number of hunters in this fight, however, this is definitely a tricky encounter, especially if we consider that we really need both Edie and Tali to use their powers to keep the enemies in check, and that both of them are not necessarily hard to take down. So it once again comes down to us to stay alert and to keep an eye out for the shimmering silhouettes of hunters in stealth mode. Thankfully, those are not too difficult to spot. And so we manage to keep everyone alive throughout the fight and can now clear out the last stragglers before moving on. Let's get to the maintenance shaft before more reinforcements arrive. And conveniently enough, that maintenance shaft is right over here. This ship design is almost quarian, but not quite. It's meant for synthetics, not organics. Intriguing. I found the geometric shapes intuitive and comfortable. I assumed you all felt the same. I can detect the faint presence of Geth intelligences. Those not loaded into mobile platforms serve in the ship itself. For all our cybernetic upgrades, I'll never understand integrating that completely into a system. Shouldn't be too much farther to the main battery. I appreciate what you're doing here, Shepard. Well, I care deeply about the Quarian people. It's good to be back on the Normandy. Let me know if it's too quiet for you to sleep, and I'll find you someplace louder. Hmm. You do not need to be circumspect. I am aware that you and Tally became physically intimate during the fight against the Collectors. Thank you, Edie. And again, one more point in favor of Edie on this mission. Damn it. Priority message. A planetary defense cannon just took down Admiral Chorus's ship. Survivors? They got to escape pods. And I've got Admiral Ron trying to establish a secure link. Put her through. Shepard, this is Ron. The heavy fleet is collapsing. I don't know how much longer we can hold out. We'll have the Reaper signal deactivated shortly, Admiral. Right, so things are getting a little tense for the Quarian fleet, so we should get a move on and see that we deactivate that Reaper signal as quickly as possible. Before we can do that, however, we have another interesting area to cross. Watch the shockwaves! That's a big gun! We should be okay if we stay in cover! Right, so we are now not only dealing with Geth troopers, rocket troopers and hunters, but also with a steady stream of electric shockwaves that are rushing down this corridor here. They move extremely fast and if they hit us we lose all of our shields, but luckily it is not too difficult to stay clear of them, as they announce themselves quite loudly and are also coming in from straight ahead. Staying in cover also keeps us safe, even if we pop out to shoot while the shockwave rushes through. They are also overhead. By the way, as far as I can tell, neither our own squad members nor the shielded Geth units are actually affected by the shockwave, so it is enough to only keep Shepard in cover. And again, not even that, as we can freely shoot at our enemies while the shockwave hits, the game only seems to be concerned with whether or not we are technically in a cover position. 
And for this fight, I would highly recommend staying in one such position, ideally a little further in the back, because as you can see, there is a little walkway to our left as well. It is a bit lower than our current position, so enemies can't really shoot at us from down there, but they can still use it to get to us relatively unharmed and then pop up somewhat unexpectedly. Additionally, the right side also has some elevation that the Geth can use to flank us from above, and the further back we stay, the less likely that becomes. All in all, this fight is clearly a good example of sticking it out until it's over, even if we only have one of our squad members left to do that, as Tali did unfortunately go down earlier. Here you can also see what happens if a shockwave does hit, but at this point we don't need to worry about that. There's the maintenance lock. The main gun is offline. We're safe as long as the maintenance lock is in place. Let's move. Come on, let's get out of here. Excellent timing. Watch your shield. Stick to cover. Now, this next area is a bit of a mean one, as we start things out against a sizable number of rocket troopers that all have height advantage. For that reason, I think it's best to just keep Tali and Edie safe and try our best to neutralize that advantage by moving up to the high ground ourselves. Along the way, we can also step onto a Geth trip mine, just so you know what that looks like, and no, this totally wasn't a complete accident, and with the help of our two squad members, we can get the Geth to leave their cover positions and quickly take them out. The fight is not over yet though, as more enemies are waiting for us down on the other side here. In that regard, the mission can become a bit repetitive at times. There definitely is a lot of combat against the same enemies over and over again, and especially these corridor sections are fairly similar to each other. It's nothing too terrible in my opinion, but I still remember playing this mission for the first time and feeling that I'm not really making any progress. Again, I'm not saying they should cut out half of the fights in this mission, just one less combat encounter in these hallways here could probably help already. Part of that certainly also has to do with the fact that the portfolio of Geth units is introduced pretty quickly at the beginning of the mission, so by now we are already very familiar with the usual lineup of troopers, rocket troopers and hunters. Still, this is of course only minor nitpicking. I do by no means think that my personal preferences for mission pacing make this a bad mission or anything like that. Now at this point we are thankfully at the end of this lengthy combat section, at least almost, as the locked door here shows us that one more enemy still needs to be taken out. Once that is handled though, we can finally catch our breath and slow things down again, as two doors ahead of us mark the transition into the, well, more interesting portion of the mission. After going through door number two, we don't want to use the elevator in the middle of the room immediately. Instead, we can collect one more Geth data cache for credits and then activate the elevator controls. I'd lost you. You were worried? You bet I was. You dying because the Geth overrode my hack? 
Think of my reputation. Yeah, you were worried. Come on, the drive course shouldn't be far. That's definitely Reaper tech, but what's... Shepard Commander, help us. Legion. I am pleased we have the chance to free you from confinement. Shepard, wait. The Geth are being controlled by the Reaper signal. Right. This thing. So for all we know, Legion is with them. Maybe it sided with the Reapers voluntarily, or maybe it's hacked. All right, look who's here. Another former squad member from Mass Effect 2. And because of that history, I think we can trust Legion, at least in regards to not working with the Reapers voluntarily. So let's go with the Paragon option here. Legion helped us fight the Reapers before. There's no way it would have agreed to this. Your caution is understandable. Once freed, we will submit to any restraints you deem necessary. That is extremely reasonable, Legion. Greetings, Edie. We did not expect you to gain license to operate a personal unit. I never thought I'd say this, but it's good to see you again. Likewise, Creator Zora. So what is this thing? It uses our networking architecture to broadcast the old machine command signal to all Geth simultaneously. Then getting you out of there will shut off the Reaper's signal. Wait, you cannot simply remove the restraints. We are secured via hardware blocks nearby that shackle our operating protocols. I am familiar with the concept. The AI shackle Cerberus used to keep you under control. Yes. Used by organics, it is understandable. For Geth to install this in a formerly independent unit is... unnecessary. The hardware blocks are on the far side of the room. Far side of the room, you said? Yes. Deactivation should be simple. The Geth protected them against viral attack, not physical removal. How'd the Reapers get control of the Geth? They did not. The Creators attacked. The Geth wished to live. The old machines extended an offer. So we went to that Geth station and rewrote the heretics for what? Nothing? No, you successfully rewrote the heretics. The decision to ally with the old machines was difficult. Had the Creators not attacked, it would have been unnecessary. We'll have you out of there soon. The Geth only allied with Reapers for self-preservation. Nothing excuses an alliance with the Reapers. They could have found another way. The Geth are ostracized by all organic races. They had no other choice except to die. Damn it! I begged them to negotiate rather than attack. I did. Let's just get Legion out of there. <sighs> Got it. Tell Zora to fleet. The signal is about to go offline. This is Admiral Hangel. We're in your debt. Hardware blocks offline. We are free. As a gesture of cooperation, we have disabled the Dreadnought's Drive Corps. All weapons and barriers are offline. Alert! Geth reinforcements incoming! Right, so our trust in Legion seems to have been well placed, or he's playing a pretty sophisticated game with us. In any case, the Quarians can now retreat while we fight our way out. And with a Geth Prime on the scene, that could prove to be a little difficult. It's placing a turret. 
Now, our squad members have mentioned it already, we have Geth turrets as well as Geth combat drones in this fight, both a result of the Geth Prime's presence, which can deploy them just like the Cerberus Engineer can. This is arguably making the Geth Prime even more dangerous than it was in previous games, because of course it still possesses extremely tough shields and armor, and its main cannon still hits like a tank. So, raise your hand if you saw that coming. Rather unsurprisingly, I think, Admiral Geral is not following the plan to retreat the Quarian fleet and is instead using his heavy fleet to open fire on the Dreadnought. That means we are no longer just in danger of being killed by the Geth, but could very well end up being blown up by the Quarians we were trying to help in the first place, something that we should remember if we make it out of here alive. And, well, doing that is certainly not getting any easier, as we have just run out of ammunition, something that can happen easily in this fight, no matter which weapon you bring along. There simply isn't that much ammo lying around in the area, and the few bits and pieces that are available often force you out of cover. Not a great idea, as long as one or two Geth Primes are still running around. Speaking of which, those Primes can be a dangerous threat, yes, but they can also be our most valuable ally in this fight, as again, Tali's sabotage has no issues turning them against the other Geth, even with their shields at full strength. And a single Prime can wreak total havoc among the enemy lines, or at least draw the attention of multiple rocket troopers and get itself blown to pieces in the process. Sadly, the hack doesn't last too long, but with Tali's abilities developed primarily for rapid cooldown speeds, we can simply drop one sabotage after another. However, that does in no way mean that this is an easy fight. After all, we can't hack every enemy simultaneously. And as you can see, there are a lot of them. The constant barrage from the rocket troopers is certainly one part of the problem, the lack of ammo another, and let's not forget about Geth Hunters just appearing out of the blue, because honestly you can't keep track of everything. Still, we are making some solid progress here, even though our health bar is not exactly looking stellar at the moment, and the new Geth Pulse Rifle is definitely also presenting itself as a reliable firearm. And so, we are slowly but steadily clearing out the room here, both Edie and Tali are also still alive, and as a result it does in fact appear as if we might make it out of here alive, at least for now. Alright, let's make our exit. The Geth couldn't kill us, but it looks like Admiral Garrow is trying his hardest. Shepard deflate. Hold fire. I repeat, hold fire. They're not responding. Damn it. Shepard Commander, we have taken control of docking protocols. We'll be right there. Shepard, reading a loss of gravity. You okay over there? Fine. 
We're leaving in a Geth fighter, transmitting rendezvous coordinates. Does the storage compartment have adequate room, Shepard Commander? We're fine. Go! On the dreadnought while you were on board? They were supposed to pull their fleet out safely. Instead. I know. Admiral Garrel's been causing trouble along the Turian border for years. But I can understand their desperation. We only lost Earth a few weeks back. We haven't lost Earth yet. We need help, Shepard. We need a fleet. And the Corians have the biggest one out there. I'll get it, Admiral. Your unilateral strike endangered us all. I should charge you with treason. I was within my authority as Admiral of the Heavy Fleet. And what of Shepard and Talizora? They escaped unharmed. Shepard, the mission parameters changed. Your military, you understand that. Now, time to grab some morality points, and we are going for the Renegade choice here. Not only because I think it's justified, but also because it unlocks a Renegade interrupt in just a second. I understand that you wasted your chance to withdraw safely. The Dreadnought was a perfect target. <clears throat> Admiral, you jeopardized your mission and your people. Get the hell off my ship. Shepard, I understand you're angry. If I didn't need your fleet... He nearly got us killed, Ron. You must understand. The Geth inflicted heavy casualties before you disabled the Reaper signal. You said they have the planetary defense cannon? Had. Admiral Corus sacrificed his own ship to destroy it. He crash-landed on the home world. The Normandy can assist with rescue efforts. Thank you, Commander. I think the worst is over. The Geth no longer possess the programming upgrades they had while enslaved by the Reapers. Shepard Commander, we are prepared to offer assistance. I see your Geth friend has returned. The Reapers were using Legion like a signal booster to broadcast commands from the Dreadnought. We freed him. It. We freed it. This is a fascinating prototype. With some study, I may be able to use it to find a weakness in the Geth Consensus. At this point, we now want to say no to grab some Paragon points and to get another chance for an interrupt, so all in all, we are maximizing our morality points from this conversation. Legion helped me in the fight against the Collectors. So did your pistol. Should I worry about its feelings as well? I don't think you want to continue this line of thought, Admiral. Legion is my friend. More importantly, it's our best source of information on the Geth. The scientific benefits... ...are off the table. What can you tell us about the Geth? How will they react without Reaper guidance? This is a false assumption. You have cut off long-range control, but the old machines placed a base on Rannoch for short-range direction. The Geth still have Reaper upgrades? Correct. They are currently disorganized, but once the short-range signal is in place, they will recover. Kila! I need to warn the fleet. Zen, coordinate with Garrel. Move! We need to take out the Reaper base. Where's it located? Unknown. Find it. Understood. We do know the location of a server from which Geth fighter squadrons are controlled. The squadrons are targeting creator life ships. Disabling them will limit casualties. We offer assistance. Thanks. Edie, can you clean this up? I will try. This is the Kodesh! We've lost barriers! Our comm system is jammed! Can anyone hear this? We have Geth fighters incoming! Please, if anyone can hear this, we need help! We have hull breaches! Life support failing! 
And let's quickly warn Admiral Lan here before it's too late. Ron, the Kinesh is getting swarmed by Geth fighters. Damn it. Interceptors, divert to the Kinesh. Thank you, Commander. If you hadn't enhanced that signal, we'd have lost the ship. Now, this is a small interaction that you can actually fail if you don't warn the Admiral fast enough, and the timer is in fact not that generous. The Geth recovered faster than we'd hoped. If it hadn't warned us, they could have wiped us out. No morality points this time, but we can reaffirm that Legion is not a threat. Perhaps that will ease the tension a bit. Sounds like you owe Legion an apology. However advanced your friend is, it's still a Geth. A Geth who just saved your fleet. And I wish I could have known it better. But right now, we cannot afford trust. What do you need? And as part of this conversation here, we can now also ask about Admiral Zen, as we now have a follow-up dialogue option available that we did not have access to before the mission. Which fleet does Admiral Zen command? Special projects. It's not a fleet per se. Just a few research vessels. Her technical breakthroughs have put us within striking distance of the homeworld. You're not worried about her losing perspective, given her interest in the Geth? If she can save our people, she can do whatever she wants. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you, Commander. And there we are, that is another mission completed, another achievement unlocked, and we can now take a brief look at our war assets, which at this point in the game are actually looking quite nicely. As always, I will not go into detail about the individual assets here, but you can of course pause the video and read about the new additions for yourselves. Instead, I want to take this moment here to talk about the next steps in our plan. As a result of this mission, we now have two more missions available that we can complete in any order, very similarly to the two missions involving the Krogan prior to the main mission on Tuchanka. However, I think before we tackle either one of those, we will make a quick trip back to the Citadel and finally get this romance situation solved. Now, you might not be aware of this, but we are actually at a point where we could in theory lock in one of several romances, as we have progressed far enough with multiple squad members. So there is no need to blow off anyone before we can make sure that our desired target is actually still interested. And yes, this took a little bit of planning and I am somewhat proud that it worked the way it did. Now regarding our eventual romance option, I think the opinion among you guys is pretty clear. But just to be sure, I would be happy if you could let me know who you think we should choose. We already said no to Caden, so he is unfortunately out of the picture, but it looks like Liara is still interested. Diana Alice was fairly transparent regarding her intentions with us the last time she visited the captain's cabin. Tali is technically still Shepard's girlfriend from Mass Effect 2, and well, those of you who know the game are likely aware of a few other options that might be available to us. So if you don't want to get spoiled on those, maybe tread carefully in the comment section. In any case, I think we will lock in a romance in the next episode, unless anyone has a good argument in favor of holding out a little longer. If that's the case, then please let me know in the comments as well. And I think with that, we have reached a good point to make the cut for today. As always, if you have enjoyed the video, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.